hello and welcome to the asylum. I'm your host, Don, and with me today is no one because once again, Jeremiah left me. He's left me all by my lonesome to watch these wonderful movies. And he missed out on a fun fact, which is that he shares a name with the president of the United States in Top Gunner America versus Russia. So we're talking about, obviously, the Top Gunner movies. Uh, it turns out, I found out after further research, that there are actually three of these. However, uh, the middle one, Top Gunner Danger Zone, is not available for free on any streaming services. And I refuse to spend money to watch these god-awful movies. So, if at any point it becomes available for free, I will watch it and talk about it. But until that point, we're just going to talk about these two. So, our movies are Top Gunner and Top Gunner America vs. Russia. Top Gunner is uh, also about America against Russia. It follows a group of special forces personnel that steal a CRISPR technology from the Russians. CRISPR is a real thing. It is a uh, science based around using a specific type of RNA to rewrite DNA. And we're, try we're trying to use it for like cancer research, stuff like that. It's a real thing. It actually exists. So good on you, Asylum, for doing at least a modicum of research. The Special Forces personnel are escaping, and they're going over South America when they get attacked. And they're in their super spy mobile airplane thing. And they crash in a not-yet-approved American base in, I think, Brazil, somewhere in South America, where Eric Roberts is the CEO, and he's training these young pilots on how to be pilots. And of course, you have all of the very unique characters, the guy who messes up, the guy who's really good, and the token female. And there may have been a fourth guy, I'm not entirely sure. And so they have to protect these Special Forces personnel from the Russians who are arriving, and hijinks ensue. Not really a lot of talk about in this movie. It wasn't very good, but it wasn't very bad. It was really boring. Um, on the bright side, Eric Roberts actually does attempt to be involved in this movie, as opposed to the last movie that we saw Eric Roberts in that was done by the Asylum. But overall, uh, it's not very good. So the Russians end up uh, showing up, getting through, getting their CRISPR back. Uh, the leader of the Special Forces gets shot by a really, really bad sniper. So he shoots him and he goes down, but he's totally fine. And then the Russian leader is like, yo, we're just going to leave. And as he's walking away, he's like, after I leave, shoot them all. Which makes no sense. Like, you just watched, you are the leader of these Russian people. And you just had a dude shot. Why would you not have your sniper then just take out the whole rest of the team or the other boots on ground do it rather than wait until after you leave to do it because, of course, they're going to break out, which happens, and then they save the day. And that is Top Gunner. Top Gunner, America versus Russia. I thought it was a sequel because it also has Eric Roberts in it. It is not. These movies are not connected to each other at all. Eric Roberts plays a completely different character. In the first one, he was the CO of the base, the commanding officer. And in this one, he's the president of the United States with a completely different name. Oh, I forgot to mention something that really bothered me in Top Gunner. I'm going to go back to that real quick. At one point, the leader of the Special Forces calls these O1s lieutenant and then they proceed to correct him and say that they are first lieutenants no lieutenant in the navy or in the military in general because this is about the air force but they're never going to correct you on that because it's broken down like that in the navy 
It is Lieutenant Junior Grade and Lieutenant are 0203. In the other armed forces, 01 is a first lieutenant and then or second lieutenant, and the other one's first lieutenant, right? You just called them lieutenant or LT, regardless of whether or not they are a full lieutenant or a, a junior grade or a first or a second lieutenant. You just, it's lieutenant. That's it. You just call them that. The only time you would ever bring up the fact that they're not a full lieutenant is if you were trying to dress them down. Only time. Otherwise, just go call, call them lieutenant. It really bothered me. Uh, but anyway, back to Top Gunner America versus Russia. So Top Gunner America versus Russia um, is somewhat topical. It's dealing with like the war between Russia and the Ukraine. There's a new Russian president. He's trying for peace. But he's being betrayed. And he ends up getting killed. But a CIA agent who is working in Russia gets tipped off that there's going to be an assassination attempt. When she is getting tipped off, she is standing in a public location. There's nobody around. They verify that they were free and nobody could be listening in. Standing on a bridge, having this conversation about the oncoming assassin assassination of the Russian president. And then her informant gets shot. Except that he gets shot by a guy standing two feet behind them. Two feet. What kind of spy does not notice that there is a guy two feet behind them with a gun while having a top secret conversation. Whatevs. So she manages to contact the vice president in time to warn him of what is happening and they save the Russian president's life. At the same time, we have two pilots on the John F. Kennedy aircraft carrier out in the middle of the ocean doing pilot things. And they are testing out the brand new F-A-X, which is some new fighter plane that supposedly we are making. And so they're trying them out, they're testing them. One of them's obviously a hothead. The other one's a female. And he knows the vice president for some reason. So after saving the Russian president's life, the Russian president gets on his version of Air Force One, starts flying back to Russia. He's like, we got to start investigating. And while he's talking, the Minister of Defense for Russia shoots him in the head and assumes the presidency and then sends fighter planes to go bomb D.C. But whilst en route, they have to go over the John F. Kennedy. So they're going to bomb the John F. Kennedy first. But fortunately, the pilots on John F. Kennedy are up in the air in their special FAXs, and they are not ready for them, but they are able to respond. So there are a couple issues with this. One, aircraft carriers don't travel alone. Ever. Because they are very easy to see. An aircraft carrier has a whole fleet with it. It's got destroyers. It's got cruisers. It might even have some submarines. It's got all of this in preparation that if somebody were to try to attack, we'd be ready. Additionally, they have an ungodly amount of anti-aircraft weaponry. You would not be able to send random pilots who are on a bombing run to a civilian city and have them successfully attack an aircraft carrier. No. Literally impossible. But they try it anyway. And they apparently succeed because this is a movie. So the pilots who just happen to be in the air chase them down and inform uh, America that these Russian pilots are on the way. And then Russia sets off some nuclear warheads that are on the way. And the CIA agent manages to assassinate the new president and install her friend as the new new president. And then they stop the nuclear warheads. This movie actually has very little to do with fighter pilots. Very little. Uh, and yeah, that's that's Top Gunner. Again, very boring. 
and convoluted. Um, these two movies are not great. Eric Roberts does a better job in them than he did in the last movie he was in, so that's a bonus. But other than that, don't waste your time. I wasted three hours on these movies, and you don't need to do that. You have more important things to do with your life. You could go outside. You could spend time with your family. You could play video games. Do not watch these movies.